Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sushumna. Today I'm going to talk about ACL rehabilitation in the knee joint. So I'll discuss about introduction, signs and symptoms, mechanism of injury, ACL rehab, ACL classification, special test, investigations, and stages of recovery during PT. No, I, I mean stages of recovery. Um, after surgery. So first comes introduction. In the knee joint, we have uh, four ligaments, anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament, medial collateral ligament and lateral collateral ligament. So in this four ligaments, ACL is very important. This is major uh, ligament in uh, knee joint. This helps in stabilizing uh, complete knee. It is located in the middle of the um, knee joint. If you see this diagram, you can see anterior cruciate ligament. Wait, I'll tell. Uh, if you see anterior cruciate ligament, this is anterior cruciate ligament. Back side of this is posterior cruciate ligament. And at the sides, we have medial and lateral collateral ligaments. So uh, uh, this is located in the middle and this is important for stabilizing the knee joint. It is connected, uh, I mean this anterior cruciate ligament connects um, femur to tibia. Uh, it holds uh, the joint, um, the, knee, the complete knee joint. So um, this is like very thick, thick um, fibrous band. ACL is a thick fibrous band. It is, mm, it is around uh, 40 mm thickness, 36 to 40 mm thickness. And um, it is very important joint in the knee. So when compared to other joints, other uh, ligaments, ACL injuries are more common uh, severe uh, traumatic knee injuries. Most ACL tears occur from non-contact injuries. Uh, during sports, you can notice this kind of injuries. We'll see ACL injuries in teens, young adults, and sports people while performing uh, their sports activities like uh, twisting, jumping, sidestepping, etc. And women is more prone to this ACL ligament injury. Yeah, they are um, means nine times more uh, prone to um, ACL injuries when compared to men. So after introduction comes uh, symptoms of ACL. So once um, um, twisting happens and um, patient falls, then immediately you can see four classical signs. One is popping sound. There is a popping sound and immediately it is followed by pain and swelling and then um, because of the severity in pain, the patient is inability to move the joint. There is instability occurs, means because the function of ACL is stability. So when ACL torn happens, there is instability automatically. So after this ACL and after this instability, you can even notice hemarthrosis, that is blood accumulated in the knee joint. So these are the four classical signs you will see in ACL tear symptoms. Um, ACL tear. Uh, so once the pay, ACL tear happens, you will see this uh, four signs. And after uh, uh, see, oh, I already discussed about the mechanism of injury here. So ACL injuries most commonly occur during sports that involve sudden stops or changes in the direction, like jumping and landing. Um, this uh, ACL tear injuries are mostly seen in soccer, basketball, football, and downhill skiing. So after symptoms, uh, so once you see symptoms, now you want to know um, what, uh, uh, what level of injury happened to the patient, like how much torn it is, how much ACL got torn. So there are levels of severity in ACL injuries from slight tear to complete tear complete rupture. So what are the types? What are the levels? So here we'll make it as a three grade one sprain, grade two sprain and grade three sprain. 
so when acl fibers are uh, stretched but there is no tear then that is uh, that comes under grade 1 here there is little tenderness and swelling is seen um, but the knee does not feel unstable knee, knee is fine only it is not unstable um, but only thing is because of that acl stretch you see uh, tenderness and swelling in the patient that is grade 1 grade 2 is partial torn of ligament is noticed uh, there is little more tenderness little more swelling means moderate swelling is there joint may be uh, little unstable or give out during activity next comes grade 3 grade 3 means complete torn of the ligament so again this is in two parts there is tenderness but um, um, uh, not a lot of pain because even that pain receptors got torn the ligament cannot control knee movements knee feels unstable or gives out at certain moments so these are the types of acl injuries next comes diagnosis so once we think acl is in torn so we generally go with three special tests one is latchman test second is anterior jaw test and third one is pivot shift test but pivot shift test is more uh, important test it's a gold standard test for acl here leg is externally rotated valgus force is applied as leg is flexed positive test is indicated by clunk sensation like pop sound you will get it and latchman test in the latchman test patient uh, lying in supine position with knee flexed to 30 degrees pull on the tibia towards you like little tibial translation you can do it here and notice the changes first before doing to affected knee you should always try to do to other side of the knee unaffected knee and then you uh, do to the affected knee and next comes therefore you can see the changes so next comes anterior draw test uh, here patient supine with knee flexed 90 degrees patient will lie in supine position and knee is flexed to 90 degrees stabilize patient's foot by sitting on it cup your hands around patient's knee and draw the tibia towards you so this is one more test so first before going to investigation part we'll do this uh, clinical um, part that is diagnosis or special test we do and one we confirm the um, uh, this one we confirm um, uh, whether special tests are positive or not and, and next comes um, investigations in investigations um, in investigations we'll do x-rays ultrasound orthograms mris etc but uh, mri mri is very important like mri is a gold standard one here 90 to 98 percent sensitivity will notice we'll identify bone bruising here i added one mri image so where you can actually clearly notice the changes once we know that uh, level of torn in the acl after mri then we'll go with our treatment process if acl is uh, a slight torn is there or just just a stretch is there then we'll go for conservative treatment if there is a moderate torn or a complete rupture of acl then we'll go to acl and then we'll go to surgical process in conservative process rest eyes compression elevation that rise concept we have to do here and next pain free stretching exercises we can give to the patient and uh, coming to surgical process um, that uh, to repair that um, acl ligament we take autographs from our um, uh, either from hamstrings or from patellar tendon or from quadriceps tendon so we'll take that and then we'll proceed for the surgery we'll fix uh, a graft in that and once acl surgery is done next comes uh, rehabilitation uh, rehabilitation for the acl joint is very acl ligament is very important we have five different stages and it's a long process in stage one 
initially we give cryotherapy for every two to four hours generally knee flexion exercises knee extension exercises knee extension means with support under knee means isometric of knee joint we should isometric hams uh, quadriceps uh, isometrics we should do here we give gait training with crutches in the stage one in second stage we continue gait training we give general squats here hamstring curls and calf exercises calf squeezing movements will give in the second stage so second stage is between 3 to 10 weeks and next comes third stage which is 11 to 17 weeks this is called rehab running and leg stiffness stage so in the third stage we we start giving lunges side steps and we'll ask the patient to do flutter style swimming strokes and uh, we can even encourage aqua rehabilitation here um, and we can uh, go ahead with strengthening exercises for and we should check for um, what is this ankle uh, stiffness if there is any ankle stiffness and then accordingly we should relieve that ankle st uh, stiffness with our stretching exercises once that is done uh, a sports specific training is given in the stage three once stage 3 is finished, we will go to stage 4, uh, which is 18 to 23 weeks. Here patient is in, um, he can run, he can start, he can start running, um, means we can progress his run. And here we can give general plyometrics. Um, dynamic stabilization is also encouraged here, like agility training, functional training. We can start all of those. Mm. Uh, more specific, uh, more sport specific activities we can encourage here. Even core strengthening is um, patients' uh, core strengthening should develop, should be developed, and uh, therefore only he can do functional strengthening programs, functional training programs, and all his power should develop uh, in this stage, in this fourth stage of the rehabilitation. And next comes a final stage, which is fifth stage. So this is 23 um, plus weeks. Here, uh, full team training. Here, uh, um, the patient should be good enough to uh, perform his uh, program, his training. He can return back to sports. Means complete performance enhancement training with return to sports with, uh, is our fifth stage program. So before going to sports, we should always check for his full range of motion and uh, there shouldn't be any pain there shouldn't be any swelling and uh, he can ability to run um, frontwards backwards sideways everywhere all all sides and he can he should be ability he should have that ability to jump and hop in all different directions so once he is perfect uh, then he can uh, go back he can return back to sports and he can um, start playing uh, uh, after his um, strengthening program, after uh, his five stage of uh, rehabilitation. Okay, that's all. Uh, that is what is my ACL rehabilitation. If you have any doubts, you can ping me to my email. That is sushumna2028 gmail.com. S U S H U M N A 2020 at the rate of gmail.com. Thank you so much.